Hey guys, welcome to a new video. It is tea time, so we're gonna have a nice and laid back, relaxed little chatty video today. And we're gonna talk about the wedding. I'm gonna be answering a bunch of questions that you guys sent me about the wedding. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I did actually upload a blog post to my blog with photos from the entire wedding, everything, walking you through the whole thing from getting ready to after the wedding, pictures of everything. I dropped names of all the people that we worked with. So I will link that in the info card up there and you can go read that if you want to get a little walkthrough of the entire wedding because we're gonna go more into details in this video. So yeah, be sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. And let's get into the questions. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much did you cry? I think a 2, maybe. I did cry a little bit. I shed maybe one tear. <laughs> I was so ecstatically happy that I couldn't cry. I only really cried when Robert read his vows and only a little bit. And then as I was reading my own vows, I was still a little choked up from hearing his. But literally throughout the entire thing, you can see it in the wedding photos. It is actually quite ridiculous. The vast majority of photos that I'm in, my face is like, as I was scrolling through the photos when we got them from the photographer, I just, I couldn't believe how insane I look in every photo. What was the best and worst thing about planning it beside making that gorgeous dress? The best thing about planning the wedding, being able to bring my vision to life. I had a pretty clear view of what I wanted. We, <laughs> we had a pretty clear view of what we wanted. Um, but I was kind of the driving force behind it. And somehow finding ways to make all of those dreams a reality was so surreal and amazing to do. And the worst thing was 100% getting into a pandemic. <laughs> we planned the majority of the wedding pretty early into our engagement. We knew we wanted to get married on our 10th anniversary a long time. So if I'm completely honest, some foundational bits of the wedding were already laid down even before the proposal. This was supposed to be the second year after the pandemic and everybody thought that it would be over by now. So I was worried that everybody was going to move their 2020 wedding to the spring of 2021. So I wanted to, you know, book the most important vendors and everything in advance. So uh, we had most of the things laid out already and then afterwards we got into the second wave, third wave that no one was really expecting and at that point, uh, from that point onward we just weren't sure if we were going to be able to have the wedding and every time in the Netherlands the measures are announced in press conferences. So every time there was a press conference I would just sit there and then they would announce more restrictions and I would cry and be like we have to cancel the wedding, we really didn't want to and there was a point very close to the actual wedding where it looked like the only thing that would be allowed would be a 30 minute ceremony, just a 30 minute ceremony. And that's the only thing after that, everyone would have to disperse and go home. And that was, that was the absolute low <laughs> of the whole thing for me. Somehow, luckily, shortly after measures lifted and we were actually able to have pretty much the whole thing from ceremony through to the dinner so it was all good that on the crying scale was a solid eight or nine <laughs> planning a wedding in a pandemic don't recommend honestly in hindsight if i had known it would go like this i probably would have moved the wedding but by the time we fully realized that it wasn't going to get better <laughs> it was too late did you sleep the night before um yes i did wake up fairly early just from excitement but i uh, yeah we both slept fairly well. Do you feel any different now? I know you both have been living together for so long, but still. Maybe a little bit. Nothing dramatic, I think. Um, we have indeed been living together for several years, so we've been together for 10 years, so it's not like our relationship really has changed, but there is still something about making it official and knowing that it's officially forever now um, that just adds that little bit of extra security. So there were lots of questions about um, if there's anything that I would do differently or anything I wish I had or hadn't done or included in the wedding or basically anything that I regret. And it almost feels cheesy to say this, but honestly, no, everything was absolutely perfect. And if I had the chance to do it again, I would do it exactly the same way. Very happy with all the choices that we made. And I honestly think it couldn't have been any better.
Why did you get married? What are the pros and cons? So this is a good question, actually. Marriage isn't that common, I feel, anymore in the Netherlands, or at least in my social circle um, and within my group of peers. I feel like not that many people get married anymore. It definitely does happen, but it's not, you know, the standard necessarily. And also this day and age in the Netherlands, there are barely any benefits to getting married. There are some tax and insurance benefits, I think, and everything that has to do with being um, each other's close family, of course. So in case of emergencies and medical stuff and things like that. I don't think there's anything that sets marriage apart from civil partnership and other constructions like that. Honestly, the main reason why we got married is that I really wanted to have a wedding. <laughs> Um, just, you know, have that fairy tale princess moment. I feel like people might disagree with that, but it is what it is. Marriage doesn't mean that much um, in this day and age where I live in any case. And it's mostly just something that you do for fun. It's just something that I have always wanted to do. I always wanted to, you know, marry the love of my life and have that, you know, the whole wedding and everything and throw a big party and have everyone there. And just the whole wedding experience is something that has always appealed to me very much and something I've always looked forward to and I just wanted to make that dream come true. And also, of course, you know, being legally tied to my now husband. Um, but again, we didn't necessarily have to get married to get that. Um, we just chose to because we wanted to. What moment made you laugh the most? So somehow, and this is just one of the many miracles that I feel we experienced on our wedding day, after weeks of cold and rain and horrible weather, our wedding day was amazing. We had sunshine, 27 degrees. It was a lovely, lovely sunny day. So beautiful. Um, but yes, 27 degrees. Didn't agree with the wedding cake. <laughs> so we had an amazing, beautiful and absolutely delicious vegan wedding cake that was hand-baked by my best friend who makes the most incredible vegan cakes. But um, since it was vegan, it does melt more quickly than you know traditional butter in a cake so the cake had softened quite a bit by the time we were ready to cut it so when we went to cut the cake robert and i um we cut into the cake and i <laughs> noticed right away the cakes the, the slice that we had cut just started kind of slipping off the cake and it all happens very quickly and i remember shouting for a plate no plate came in time and robert and i both just grabbed the slice with our hands and just had it in our hands. So I think I think that was um, the moment that made me laugh the most. What advice would you give newly engaged people or your past self? Get a really good idea of what you want. First of all, that is the most important thing. Stick to it. Don't let anyone else tell you what you should do on your wedding day. If you are paying for it, it is your day and just go for your dream day because you won't be able to repeat this, hopefully. Set a budget and stick to it because there's no reason for this to absolutely ruin you. That would just be a waste. Fourth thing, wait until after the pandemic. <laughs> I think that is the most important advice I have to give. How and when did you book a photographer and did they only come on the wedding day? So I actually already knew um, our photographer. She contacted me a couple of years back when she was working on a new photography style and wanted to fill up her portfolio. Uh, she found me on Instagram, I think, and contacted me to see if I wanted to do a time for frames photo shoot. And she talked about being a wedding photographer and she was such a nice person. I absolutely loved her work and I uh, have been following her on Instagram since then. So when we got engaged, I knew pretty much straight away that I wanted to have her as the wedding photographer. She is incredible. I love her style. She takes amazing candid photos, mostly. That's more her thing. She doesn't really do very styled kind of posed photo shoots, but she um, she's all about the genuine, candid, you know, emotional photos. And I absolutely love that. Very, very, very happy with her. Her name is Malou von Baumhauer. Yeah, I cannot recommend her enough. She was incredible. And yes, she was only there on the wedding day, but she was there from the start, like when we were getting ready, she was already there. And then all the way through after the wedding, we had a photo shoot and she left after that. Will you have a reception at a later date and wear the dress? Um, kind of, yes. We had to move the party, the evening party to a different date due to COVID restrictions. So there is actually a second part to our wedding. <laughs> we're gonna have that at the end of summer. And that's when we can invite more people, you know, have music and dancing and everything. So I will wear the dress again and I'm actually considering altering it 
So shortening the skirt, maybe bustling it. How did Robert and your guests react to your me made dress? It's beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Um, I got lots of compliments. Yes, I, I was, I'm, oh, people liked my dress <laughs> and so did Robert. And yeah, so many compliments. I'm so grateful. And not just during the wedding, but afterwards as well online. Just thank you guys so much. A couple of people wanted to know whether we went to church or not. And no, we did not. Neither of us are religious. So our wedding was fully secular. There were a lot of questions about the budget. How much did it cost to plan the wedding? A couple of years ago in 2018, I made this video, which ended up going viral completely unexpectedly, as, as viral videos do. There are good sides and very bad sides to having a video go viral. And one of the good sides is that you usually, um, because of all the views you receive in the time frame that the video is viral, earnings from that are boosted quite a lot. When that happened, um, I already knew that I was you know, going to get married within the next couple of years. So everything I made from that video, I put on a separate savings account already with the idea in mind that that was going to pay for a part of the wedding. So that is one of the reasons why we're able to have a wedding that costs a little bit more than average in the Netherlands. We knew we wanted a wedding that was fairly simple and laid back and relaxed, but we did want all the elements that we did have to be perfect, more or less. I can be pretty strong-willed and when I know what I want, I will go to pretty great lengths to get there. <laughs> That was definitely the case with the wedding. So there were quite a few instances where we went for a slightly more expensive option that we knew would give us great results and pretty much guaranteed perfection. Aside from that, we also went with a wedding planning and styling firm that arranged the whole forest wedding and the decorations and everything. They did all of that for us. And I don't think we would have been able to do that on our own. They, along with the catering, we had dinner and an open bar for everybody. That Those were definitely the largest or the most expensive elements of the wedding. So yeah, I'm not gonna drop the exact number, but we did pay a little bit more than would be average in our country. How many people could attend the wedding? So we were allowed 30 guests in the end. What was the song you walked down the aisle to? We both had separate songs that we walked down the aisle to and mine was um, Droomvlucht Elfenrijk, <laughs> an Efteling song. Yes, it is a song that plays during the Droomvlucht ride. It's one of my favorite things since I was a little girl and I think the music is very beautiful. It was both a little bit of a symbolic song. I feel like the Efteling plays quite a significant role in my life. I also just thought it was a very fitting and beautiful song. So Droomvlucht Elfenrijk, is it called? Elfentuin. Droomvlucht Elfentuin. That is what it's called. It's on Spotify as well. Um, it's the specific first part of the Tronflucht Bride music. <laughs> and then during the signing, we had uh, actually Memories of Marigold. It's the song that I played in the background of both my dress video at the end of at the reveal and under the entirety of the hair and makeup video that I uploaded. I just think that song is absolutely perfect for a wedding and I also kind of associated it with wedding as well because I edited those videos before the wedding with that song. <laughs> And I just thought it's really beautiful. And then uh, we had a couple more songs. And then we had um, 10 Years by Dadi Freyr, the Eurovision song for Iceland this year. I just thought it was too perfect <laughs> to not play during the wedding. So we had that um, at the very end of the ceremony when guests were getting up and leaving the ceremony location. Did your dad walk you down the aisle? Yes, he did. And that was actually one of the moments that made people tear up, apparently. <laughs> I'm very happy that I could experience that with my dad. I think that's just one of those special moments, you know, in a girl's life. So yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that we were able to do that. What songs were played? During the ceremony, we had a couple of songs from the online version of Wingspan, the game. <laughs> it's honestly, it's, it's beautiful music. Um, and then all the songs that I already listed. Then during the reception, we had a playlist of just kind of, you know, folky, acoustic, guitar, singer songwriter ish music. Just nice and quiet and background stuff, love songs. How many people would you have invited without COVID? So originally we had around 
40 guests, I think, maybe. So honestly, not that many more. But now that we have been able to move the party, we're going to have more people at the party, I think around 60 maybe. But still, we're keeping things fairly small. Did you see each other the day before the wedding? Um, yes, Robert dropped me off that morning at my best friend's house and we had planned to not see each other anymore after that. My friend and I, we went to the flower shop to make my bouquet and everything and um, put the cake in the cooling box and everything. And then we went to the hotel. Robert and I both got ready in the same hotel, but in different rooms. My friend and I were late because we were still fixing the cake and everything. We ended up arriving at the same time as Robert and his mom. So we actually saw each other at the hotel, but I wasn't done up yet, so it was okay. And after that, we only saw each other um, at the actual ceremony. Have you gotten used to calling Robert your husband? No, not at all. I actually, I was talking about the wedding with someone yesterday and I referred to him as my boyfriend and she had to correct me. <laughs> no, that is something I definitely need to get used to as well as uh, using his last name. I think that's going to take a while because, I mean, I don't use my own last name that often. Yeah, I think, I think both of those are going to take a few months before I'm fully used to them. But, you know, I have the rest of my life to get used to this. <laughs> Many dream about having the perfect wedding. What is your biggest dream now? So technically the wedding isn't over yet. We're still having the party, but honestly, the next thing is buying a house, which has been, you know, another big dream of mine for a while, but now we can fully focus on that, which is great. Oh, uh, several people wanted to see the rings. So here is mine. Here is mine. And then Robert's ring has two bands that are interwoven in a similar but slightly different knot. So Robert's uncle made our rings, which is really, really special. And we are very happy that he was able to do that for us. As for the design, we honestly, we knew we wanted something simple and more or less timeless, um, something that would age well and go with pretty much any outfit. But we also didn't want to have just a golden band. As we were looking for something to embellish the ring, we came across this knot design. We just thought it was very nice. Um, in several different ways. I mean, of course, there's the obvious, you know, love knot, things like that, infinity, um, stuff like that. Don't know if you guys are aware, but Robert and I are both scout leaders and um, it's a fairly large part of our lives, the whole scouting thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, one of the things we do there is build stuff with ropes and wood. <laughs> so, you know, knots are a significant part of um, the whole scouting experience so we thought that was you know another nice layer just it's it's very we, we just think it's very us and we like it and we also like both having a similar but slightly different ring so yeah that's the story behind the rings did you get cold feet at least a little bit uh no not at all no not for a single moment will you share some photos or video of your wedding so um i mentioned the blog post with all the photos Again, that is linked up there and I will have it in the description box as well. As for the video, we weren't actually planning on getting a video, but again, our amazing photographer somehow managed to shoot a video that day as well, aside from all the photos that she took. It's just insane, but I'm not going to share that. Um, it is a very intimate and personal thing, I feel. I honestly don't understand how people can just post that all over the internet for everyone to see. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that at all. It is very private, I think. So unfortunately, no, I'm not, not going to post the wedding video, but you can see quite a few photos and get a good impression of what it was like on my blog. How do you deal with not inviting friends or family because you would feel better, but also feeling guilty for not inviting them, like the people you feel you have to invite? We both agreed very early on in the planning process that we were not going to deal with this. We were only going to have people at the wedding who we wanted at the wedding. That's that. You know, it's our wedding, it's our special day, and we wanted to celebrate it with the people that we love and people that are closest to us and that we actually enjoy having around. So we just did not invite anybody who we didn't want to be there. I do have to admit that this was fairly easy for us as I feel like our social circle is pretty closely knit and there aren't really any people that we feel like would have expected an invitation but didn't get one. So I know it's easy for me to say, but even if it had been like that, we just wouldn't have invited that person. I have heard from other people who did get married around the same time that it was actually really convenient to hide behind the COVID measures and saying that, you know, you could only invite so many people and that um, unfortunately there wasn't enough place to host them as well. <laughs> what was your cake like? I know your friend made it, but I'd love to hear more. So it was 
fully vegan. The top tier, we had two tiers. The top tier was chocolate chip cake with chocolate ganache in between the layers. And then the bottom layer was a vanilla cake. I'm not sure if she ended up adding elder flower to it as well, but there was raspberry cremeau, there was a passion fruit mousse and lemon curd in between the layers. I didn't get to try that one unfortunately, we cut the top layer and that was the chocolate one which was incredible as well, but I would have loved to try the bottom layer as well. Not that I was able to eat a lot, um, a few bites of everything is all I, could, all I could eat that day, but I'm sure it tasted incredible and we got a lot of compliments about the cake as well. So there were also quite a few questions about the first dance and what song we danced to. So unfortunately, this is one of the things that wasn't allowed due to COVID restrictions. Everyone had to remain seated. So we didn't have a first dance or dancing music in general. We did invite a band during dinner and as they were playing, a couple of guests got up and we snuck in a little dance <laughs> for one or two songs, but we didn't plan for that. And it was all distanced and everything. <laughs> but yeah, no, no first dance, unfortunately. Not that we were honestly actually planning on doing one, but well, there will be dancing at our party. We're having a silent disco and I'm really, really excited about that. It's gonna be lots of fun. Is there anything that didn't go according to plan? If yes, how did you deal with it? The one thing that did happen is that we forgot um, both we and the location and our master ceremony for completely forgot about the wedding favors. So they were there, but we forgot to put them on top of the table for guests to take as they were leaving. So luckily <laughs> there is a part two. So we're gonna just take the wedding favors to the party and hand them out there. But um, yeah, that is honestly the only thing that went wrong. And if, if that's the worst thing, then I feel like we are truly lucky. <laughs> was Robert your first boyfriend? I am super curious. Yes, he was actually um, one man all my life. <laughs> are you going on a honeymoon? So that once again, is something um, that we've had to change due to COVID. Unfortunately, no, we really wanted to go to New Zealand for our honeymoon, but international travel on that scale isn't possible now. And I don't think it will be in the near future, not, maybe not even in a year. Our plan B was to go on our honeymoon um, on our first anniversary, but oh, I'm kind of doubtful whether that's going to be able, you know, going to be possible. So instead of that, we have decided to book a stay at the Efteling <laughs> and just stay there for a night, maybe a couple of nights and enjoy the park and um, consider that a mini honeymoon, I guess. Um, but we want to wait until we both have at least our first vaccine before we plan that, preferably our second one as well. Such a day is long. How did the two of you manage your energy during the day? So I pretty much ran on pure adrenaline <laughs> for the entire thing. Um, adrenaline and excitement. I don't even really remember. I definitely don't remember being tired at any point. I was just hyped. I was just so hyped throughout the whole thing. Um, it was fine, honestly. Did you have your veil cover your face? If yes, can we see a photo? Um, no, I actually don't tell, but the veil is made of scraps of two that I had left from my wedding dress. I wasn't actually sure if I was going to be able to do a fail at all. Um, and it is actually split down the center because I didn't have a tool left that was wide enough to, do, to be a whole veil. So you can't see it when it's all bunched up, but there is just split running down the center. You can literally, if you pull it apart, it would just open up like that. So I needed the veil to not move when I was wearing it. And there definitely wasn't enough um, to have it cover my face as well. But that wasn't really something I wanted either. I like the look of a veil, but I don't care much for the meaning behind it and stuff like that. So I was quite happy to just have it tucked, you know, behind my bun. Do you regret your timing considering now many of the restrictions have lifted? Honestly, I don't. Uh, uh, there were some times when I did during the planning process, but we really, really, really wanted to get married on our 10th anniversary. In hindsight, it, it was fine. We were able to have the majority of the wedding. It was really nice. I think honestly, even moving the party is maybe better. So no, I, I think now I can say I, I don't, I don't regret the timing of it. I'm happy we were able to do it on that actual date and that it turned out the way it did. How did you deal with all the bugs? So we got married in a forest and I noticed um, throughout the day, several times, bugs crawling up my skirt. <laughs> in between the layers. So I had to lift up my skirts and release the bugs repeatedly. I'd love to know what you did for food. I'm always so curious. So we had a barbecue 
um, there was this food truck that was just one giant barbecue. Yeah, they grilled the food for us there. Everything was vegan. So we had a bunch of vegan meat and then some sides. There were salads. There was this amazing pasta salad. Vegetables, grilled vegetables as well. And it was, it was very good. I, again, I couldn't try everything because I just couldn't get it down but I wish I wish I had been able to try more. I have always wanted to do like you did but everybody is telling me that I won't be able to do my dress, my makeup and hair and organize the wedding but I'm gonna be stressed to death. How did you manage with everything? I you know came across these opinions as well that it might not be the best idea to do everything yourself and to that I say you know best, you know your abilities, you know what you can handle in terms of stress, you know what your skills are, you know how trained you are in doing certain things, and you are the only person that can know whether you are up to the task or not. How I handled this personally, is, I, I don't know, this, this was never something that was up for discussion for me. I, I've always known I would do my own hair and makeup in any case, since I was well into my whole sewing journey by the time we got engaged. I just really wanted to make my wedding dress. I did have a plan B in case things would go awry. Um, I knew I could always buy a wedding dress, you know, if it didn't work out, but I just really wanted to and it was a huge part of the kind of anticipation and excitement for me, knowing that I could do everything myself and make my own decisions. When it comes to at least hair and makeup, I know what I'm doing. I did bridal makeup for a while, I did other people's um, makeup for their weddings and hair. If I'm completely honest, every single time I have made up and done a bride's hair, I have been more nervous than I have at my own wedding. That was actually one of the reasons why I stopped doing that. It was fine. Again, I was under a little bit of time pressure because we were running late, but that was the only thing. Um, if you think you can do it, then by all means do it. I, I don't, honestly, I don't really see what the big deal is and why you shouldn't. Just go for it. <laughs> how much of the planning did you do compared to Robert and how much was it your vision? I would say it was mostly my vision, but I did run everything by Robert, of course. Um, we decided on, I mean, I pitched the idea of a forest wedding to him and he loved that. I was also considering a castle wedding myself, but he much preferred forest wedding, so that's all we ran with. And from there, I just, you know, presented a couple of options or presented my favorite to Robert and he would either agree or disagree. And um, yeah, that's how he pretty much did the entire wedding. So I I took on the role of creative director. <laughs> did you send wedding invitations? If so, could you show us? Yeah, uh, let me grab it. Here it is. This is our wedding invitation. Um, and then when you open it up, it has the time and date here. And then there are a couple of inserts. There's a photo strip. And then this one on the back contains a link to our website, which we're still using. So I'm not gonna show that. And then here is the program, which um, did not end up being entirely accurate, but you know, close enough. So. Yeah, that is our wedding invitation. And then the back looks like this, but it has our address on the bottom, so <laughs> I'm gonna hide that. I've had a couple of people asking if it was a love or arranged marriage, which honestly surprised me, but then again, I once again forgot that people from all over the world <laughs> are here. So yay, welcome to people from the other side of the world. Um, we don't do arranged marriages over here. The concept itself is very, very foreign to me, um, not something I can imagine at all, Just something that is very much not in our culture, so yeah, definitely a love marriage. So someone asks if we had a umptenar or bops, um, so basically asking if our wedding was officiated by someone who works at the municipality or someone who is specialized in officiating weddings. Honestly, neither. A really good friend of ours did it, which was Absolutely amazing. We were so, so, so happy that he did that. I saw in photos that you were seated. Is it normal to be seated during the ceremony? Um, yes, I didn't realize that it might not seem normal, but yes, usually the ceremony is pretty long. I think ours took half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. It is very common for there to be a seat for the couple to sit in. Did you have a plan B in case the weather would be bad? Was it stressful to need good weather? So again, the wedding planning and styling company that we work with, they're able to hire these beautiful tents. So if there had been rain or if there had been a forecast of rain, we would have gotten those tents. So we honestly weren't really worried about that. It rarely rains the entire day, you know, from morning to evening. All right, guys, I feel like I have been filming for over an hour now. <laughs> so it's time to wrap things up. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. This is really fun. I'm all out of tea.
I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more beauty, fashion, lifestyle and sewing content. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there are links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, guys, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!